Welcome everyone to today's video on second order and higher order rate laws. Okay. So <clears throat> rate, just kind of go through the same procedure we did for first order reactions here. Again, we got a second order reaction, right? Which means that the rate of that reaction is related, obviously, with the rate of decay of that reactant, and it's related with the concentration of the reactant squared. Okay. And we're assuming just one reactant here for, for a lot of these things, okay? Um, and so given that, right, you can write out that differential equation here, right? And you just go through and solve it, right? Very simple differential equation to solve, okay? And when you, again, when we integrate from some initial time zero to time t, which has some initial concentration, some final concentration, right? Solving for all that, right, we get this equation here, um, often written 1 over the concentration of A, right, is equal to Kt plus 1 over the initial concentration, right, which again has that form Y equals Mx plus B, okay, where the slope is your rate constant, your y-intercept is 1 over A, okay. All right, and so again, right, in lab, you measure the concentration, right, and you question what what is the order of this reaction? Okay, well, if you want to find out if it's second order, right, we need to plot one of the concentration versus time, okay, right? If we do that, plot one over concentration versus time, if we get a straight line, it will look something like this, okay, where again, that y intercept is one over the initial concentration, okay, and the slope here is equal to the rate constant, okay. And so, again, very simple way, right, if you have um, this concentration versus time data to try to figure out what is the order of the reaction, okay? And, again, right, we can use this type of technique in combination with the isolation method that we talked about in the previous video, right, where you, where you have excess of all other reactants and you have just a small concentration of a certain reactant that you're interested in, right? So that you know the concentration of all the other reactants are basically constant over the course of the reaction. So the rate is only going to depend, the rate's only changing due to the change in concentration of this specific reactant that you're interested in, right? And then you can measure that concentration versus time and things like that, right? Um, you know, so again, if I my rate law was rate equals K, you know, A to some power, B to some power, right? Um, if I have excess of B, right, my rate, you know, is effectively some K prime, A to some power, right? Um, and then the slope that you get out, right, that K prime, that slope that you measure from looking at this type of uh, rate law expression, right, would just equal the actual rate constant times concentration of B to some power, right? And so you could back out that once you figure out what the power of B is, right? And things like that, right? And so you can back out the rate constant and, and do this, right? Because then you would do excess amounts of A and then measure the rate of the reactor respect to B, right? And once you do that, you can then back out that rate constant, okay? Um, <clears throat> right. Um, and for the half-life, right, as I mentioned, this is going to depend on the concentration. Again, you just solve for the half-life by plugging in T is equal to T one-half, and concentration of A is equal to concentration of A naught divided by 2. So you plug that into the equation, solve, right, and you get the half-life here. Again, depends on the rate constant, right? So the, the half-lives for any order of reaction, right, the half-life is proportional to 1 over the rate constant, okay, for any order, right? But... Right, but it's dependent on the concentration, varies depending on the order of the reaction. Okay, so for example, for a second order reaction, right, it's one over the concentration, right? So the larger the concentration, the shorter the half life, as we discussed in the previous video. Okay, but again, this half life does depend on what that initial concentration is, right? And which makes it so it's not as universal as first order reactions, right? Again, for first order reaction, right? Once you know the half-life for that type of reaction, right, for that specific reaction, you know it no matter what the initial concentrations are, okay? And finally, right, we can get to higher orders and stuff like that, right? Um, we talked about zero first, second orders, right? There's second orders if you have, um, you know, two reactants, 
Um, you could potentially have third order, something that depends on the catalyst or, or on the concentration product rate. And you have these kind of more complicated expressions for the final rate laws. Um, we're not going to really worry about, you know, focus on kind of those things, right? We're just mainly focusing on zero first, second order. Kind of the same stuff you kind of covered in Gen Chem and, and so on, right? In terms of um, these integrated rate laws, okay?